Sometimes when we're solving equations, we run into fractions. Now, if you're happy to deal with lots of fractions, that's great. Do it the exact same way. You're simply adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing fractions instead. Same process. Now, if you'd rather avoid fractions where possible, like the rest of us, I'll show you a little trick. An extra step at the beginning to remove all the fractions. In the same way as before, let's use the balance scale analogy. If two sides of a scale are equal, they are balanced. Again, the only rule we need to follow is that the scale stays balanced or equal. If we add 3 to the left, we also have to add 3 to the right to get it back to equal. If I triple the left side, that is times by 3, we also have to triple the right side or times it by 3 so that we're back to balanced or equal. Example 1. Solve x plus 1 half equals 9. Again, the goal to get x by itself, isolated. We have the 1 half to deal with, so we just subtract 1 half from both sides, and this would make a simple solution, except we remember, if we add or subtract fractions, we need common denominators. So we could certainly do this and get the correct answer, but let's consider an easier way. How could we get rid of the fractions? Well, we know that if we multiply 1 half by 2, the 2's would cancel, and we're left with 1. No more fractions. Now, this may seem like a bit of an arbitrary observation. That is, we can't just decide to multiply a fraction by 2 because it suits our fancy, or can we? Remember that we're dealing with an equation. We have an equal sign in there. Thus, our only rule is that we keep it balanced or equal. So, if we decide to multiply both sides by 2, we still keep it all balanced and legitimate. So, let's give that a try. On the left, we would now have 2x plus, the 2's cancelling out 1, and on the right, we would have 9 times 2 equals 18. 2x plus 1 equals 18. It's still the exact same relationship. It's all just multiplied through by 2 and still balanced. But it now looks nice and simple, like a simple two-step problem, no more fractions. So we can subtract 1 from both sides, leaving 2x on the left and 17 on the right. And then we divide both sides by 2, and we end up with x equals 17 over 2. Or, if they wanted it in decimal form, we could answer it as 8.5. Either is good. So, we've isolated the variable. We can always stop here and check our process, of course. x plus 1 half equals 9. Replace the x with empty brackets. And substitute in our 17 over 2. And we have 17 over 2 plus 1 half. Already common denominators, so 18 over 2. And 18 over 2 is indeed 9. Confirmed. Now you may be thinking, we could have done this just as easily with the subtraction of a fraction. What's the big deal? And you're right. This particular problem is probably just as easy either way. So let's move on to a more challenging one now that you have the concept. Example 2. Solve x over 2 minus 5 equals 2 thirds. Again, fractions. So we could just add and subtract and multiply and divide our fractions if we're comfortable with that. Or we could use our new strategy to remove the fractions. Let's try that. What number could we multiply everything by that would remove all the fractions? So we're looking to remove the denominators 2 and 3. So 6 would be a good number to use. Yes. The same number you'd choose if you were looking for a common denominator. Let's multiply everything through by 6. Remember that we're keeping the scale balanced. 6 times the left and 6 times the right. All still balanced. We have 6x over 2 minus 5 times 6 or minus 30 equals, on the right, 2 times 6 or 12 over 3. And we reduce these down, 
3x minus 30 equals 4. It now looks like a nice simple two-step problem. We can add 30 to both sides, leaving 3x, and on the right, 34. Dividing both sides by 3 and we have x equals 34 over 3, isolated. And of course we can always confirm this. In this tutorial, we continued our look into solving algebraic equations, and we expanded into equations that involve fractions. Our method continued to be to isolate the variable, and we solved these problems by either adding and subtracting fractions, or by simply removing all the fractions. We found that we could do this by simply thinking about our equation like a balanced scale again. Whatever we do to one side, we do to the other, and if we do this strategically, we can end up without fractions, 